Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hello everyone. It's nice to meet you in this third video on site investigation. Before I proceed with the new subtopics under site investigation, let me review or let me summarize what I had explained in the first and second videos. Site investigation is a combination of activities which include data collection, data evaluation, reporting the outcomes from data collection and data evaluation in order to obtain a safe and economical foundation design. In the second video, I mentioned three methods that can be employed to perform preliminary subsurface exploration. First is Macintosh object are probing where the outcome from the activities or outcome from the probing can be used to estimate the strength of the soil before uh, below the ground surface or to estimate the bearing capacity of the soil at different depths below the ground surface. Second method that can be employed is seismic refraction survey which is based on wave propagation or wave traveling through the material so based on the calculated velocity of wave, material below the ground surface can be identified. The third method is resistivity survey, where current is uh, applied to the ground. And based on the calculation of the resistivity, so the material type can be identified. In this third video, I will be talking about soil sampling, standard penetration test or SPT, borehole log, and soil profiling. Now let's move on to soil sampling. In the first video, I mentioned there are two types of soil sample that can be obtained uh, during subsurface exploration. The first one is undisturbed sample, and the second one is disturbed sample. Undisturbed is a general term to show that the sampling is carefully and properly done in order to minimize disturbances to the sample. And in, uh, to obtain this undisturbed sample, there are certain criteria that must be fulfilled. One here, the soil must be soft cohesive soil. Second, thin wall tubes or cell bead or shall be tubes should be used or should be employed. And the process here is by slowly and continuously pressing the tubes into the soils. So those are the criteria that must be satisfied in order to obtain undisturbed samples. And undisturbed samples are required in order to perform strength, consolidation, and permeability tests. Okay, let's take a look at this uh, schematic diagram at the bottom of this uh, slide. The length of the tube is 10 to 15 times the sub -knot. So the sub -knot indicates outer diameter of the tube. This is the sub -knot. And here we have DI prime to indicate the inner diameter of the tube. Here we have D sub I to indicate the diameter of the inlet of the tube. So the diameter of the inlet of the tube is smaller than the sub I prime or the inner diameter of the tube. This is to ensure that the diameter of the soil sample is less than the inner diameter of the tube so that friction between the soil sample and the tube wall can be minimized so uh, disturbance can be reduced. So this is the coupling where drill rod can be connected to this uh, thin wall tube. Disturb samples. Disturb sample can be obtained using auger, split spoon sampler, spade, and so on. And the obtained sample can be used to uh, perform sieve analysis, specific gravity tests, ethyl limits, compaction tests, and so on. In obtaining this soil sample, 
there's an indicator to show whether the soil sample obtained is disturbed or undisturbed. This is based on what we call area ratio, which is expressed as A sub R equals to D naught squared minus D I squared divided by D I squared multiplied by 100, where D sub naught here indicates uh, outer diameter of the tube. DI here indicates the diameter of the inlet of the tube. If the quantity here less than 10%, the sample obtained can be categorized as undisturbed. However, if the value here is greater than 10%, the sample is categorized as disturbed sample. Another uh, index that can be obtained from uh, soil sampling here is what we call recovery ratio, indicate, indicated as R sub R equals to length of sample obtained divided by length of sampler advanced multiplied by 100. So this slide shows uh, pictures of uh, equipment that can be employed to obtain soil samples. So this is a thin wall tube used to obtain undisturbed sample from soft cohesive soil. This is what we call split spoon sampler, can be used to obtain disturbed samples. This is a spade, screw auger, and here also another auger. Okay, this picture shows a sample of a split spoon sampler. The drive shoe and the coupling can be detached from the tube and the tube can be splitted into two halves. That's what it is called as split spoon sampler. So this is the schematic diagram of a split spoon sampler. Okay, this is the uh, the drive shoe here, the coupling here used to uh, connect this tube or this sampler to drill rod. So those are the uh, dimensions, okay, those are the dimensions of the uh, split spoon sampler. So this picture shows the split spoon sampler is being opened and then we can see soil sample in it. There are certain reasons why undisturbed samples are difficult to obtain. One, samples are released from confining stress. Second, uh, sample may experience volume change and grade reorientation or displacement. Then, soil, sam uh, soil samples uh, might be compressed during sampling and extrusion due to friction between the soil sample and the tube wall. Uh, next is a loss in hydrostatic pressure. And last year, quality and ethic of focus. Those are the reasons why uh, undisturbed samples are difficult to obtain. Okay, let's move on to soil drilling. This is a method of uh, performing uh, detailed subsurface exploration. Normally, it needs a drilling rig, which is uh, capable of drilling up to 100 feet or about 35 meters. And most commonly used drilling rig in this case is a rotary wash boring. This is the uh, picture shows a drilling rig. Okay, this is uh, the schematic diagram how a borehole or a soil drilling is being uh, performed. Okay. First, the steel casing is driven into the soil about two or three meters deep. After that, drill rod attached to a drill bit is pressed into the ground and the drill rod is rotated. So when this uh, drill rod is rotated, the drill bit also rotated. Let's uh, take a look at this uh, picture here. This is a picture of a drill bit. This drill bit is hollow connected to drill rod drill rods are also hollow. So normally each drill bit has 
three, but as, uh, I call it as three gears. We have two gears here, one, two, and one at the back. Okay. So when the drill rod is rotated by uh, using the drilling machine, so this drill bit also will rotate, and this gear also will rotate and will uh, dislodge or loosen the soil particles. You, at the same time, water is pumped at a very high velocity through the drill rod because the drill, rod, drill, uh, the drill rods are hollow. Okay, water are pumped at very high velocity, and water will exit through this uh, drill bit. Since the velocity of the pumped water is much much higher than the velocity of water seeping to the surrounding soil the water will go up between the casing and the drill rod carrying with it soil particles so that a hole is created so the process is repeated until hard layer is uh, encountered or until a predetermined depth so during this process soil samples can be obtained from different depths in addition to that several types of tests can also be performed depending upon the soil type during the drilling operation there are, sev uh, there are several types of tests that can be performed one is standard penetration test or spt the test consists of grabbing the standard split spoon sampler a distance of 450 mm into the soil at the bottom of a hole using a 63.5 kg hammer okay falling free from a height of 760 mm so the targeted penetration is 450 mm this test also consists of counting the number of blows to drive the last 300 mm of the sampler to obtain the n number the total penetration targeted is 450 mm but in order to obtain the spt n number here depends on the number of blow counts required to achieve the last 300 mm penetration let's take a look at example here okay uh, Normally, the targeted 450 mm total penetration is divided into three equal length, meaning each segment has a length of 150 mm. Since the targeted is uh, 450, so we have three 150 mm. First 150, second 150, and third 150 mm. In Malaysia, normally drillers divide this 450 mm into six equal length of 75 mm so the total will be one uh, will be 450 mm and instead of 150 they divide into 275 a bit detail okay, okay let's assume this is the targeted 450 mm let's say this is the sampler and this is look uh, now is positioned at the bottom of the borehole here we cannot see it's at the bottom of the borehole so since the sampler is connected to drill rods so the exposed drill rods is used where marking are done on the drill rods with the top end of the casing is used as the reference so this guy is doing the marking so this is the reference the top end of the casing one two three four five six so it has a sorry it has a six equal length of 75 mm okay so this six uh, equal segment equals to six equal segment uh, on the soil on this on the sampler okay now this is the uh, hammer 63.5 kg this is the anvil connected to drill rod okay rod connected to the sampler at the bottom of the borehole. So this hammer is raised, but, uh, is raised up to 760 mm and then it is allowed to fall free 
and the hammer will hit this anvil and drive the rod and the sampler into the ground. Okay. Let's say, okay, so this is the, the, the bottom of the hole and this is the bottom end of the sampler. So divided into 675. Okay, 675. And then these are the numbers or uh, the number of flows required. But this is not, these numbers are not predetermined. It depends on the uh, number of flows to drive these uh, 75 segments. Let's say the first 75 segment uh, required two blows, okay, to penetrate the first 75 mm. The first 75 mm here, two blows were required. So we record as two here and then we go to the to obtain the 75 mm penetration it required three blows so record three blows the third 75 mm it required five blows so you record five the fourth 75 required four blows the fifth 75 required seven blows and the sixth 75 mm required nine blows Okay. So those are the number of blows required to penetrate each 75 mm segment. So by definition, SPTN is based on the number of blows required to, uh, penet to, to penetrate the last 300 mm. So the last 300 mm equals to the last four 75 mm segments. So the first two here, even though the number of blues, uh, the number of blues are recorded, but are not in, taken into account to obtain the SPTN number. So the SPTN number based on the last four here. So N equals to five plus four plus seven plus nine. Okay, five plus four plus seven plus nine equals to 25. That's how SPTN number is determined. Okay, this is a sample of borehole lock. Okay. This borehole lock is used to record all the information during the uh, soil drilling. So there are certain uh, information that need to be uh, inserted into this uh, borehole lock. For example, here, the, uh, what do you call the project title. Okay, project title. And then the borehole number, maybe we have a several boreholes. So for example here, borehole lock, this borehole lock refers to borehole lock number seven. And this is the uh, sheet number. Maybe for one borehole requires four or five sheets. So this is a sheet number one, for example. Here, uh, reduce level is the uh, elevation of the ground surface with respect to the mean sea level. And type of drill here is the uh, rotary wash boring. These are the uh, guys, okay, who lock or who input the data. And there's the drill by is the machine operator. This is the starting date and this is the finishing date. At the left column here, it indicates the depth or the elevation with respect to the ground surface. This column represents the description of the soil in terms of uh, 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 in terms of uh, consistencies, color, relative density, and so on. This column represents legends. Some people using different color to indicate different soil or different pattern to indicate a different type of materials. There's another column here. Sorry, before that, this is a sample. Okay. But under this title sample, there are several columns that to be filled. Here is the depth. Even though we have depth here, we have another depth here. This depth here to indicate uh, uh, the elevation at which tests or samples are being obtained. Okay? Tests being performed or samples are being obtained. And then here the number. Indicate number of tests performed or number of samples obtained. Here is a field test indicate SPT, standard penetration test. 
okay, uh, in this uh, borehole lock, they use 675 segments. 75, 75, 75, 75, and so on. We have 675 segments. Okay, so the total is 450 mm. The targeted uh, penetration is 450 mm. The last column here is uh, a remark here. At the bottom left here, there's, there are notes, right? For example, here we have uh, S. It shows standard penetration test. N here represent SPTN value. C, uh, UD indicates undisturbed sample. D indicate disturbed samples. R over R recovery ratio, RQD, is the rock quality designation and WL indicates water level. Here we have a small table with two columns. The left column here is to be used to refer to cohesive soil like clays or silts. The numbers here refer to SPTN number N. So if the number between zero to two so this cohesive, the cohesive soil is uh, categorized as very soft from two to four, soft and so on. So the right column here is to be used uh, to refer to non-cohesive soil like uh, sand or gravel. So again, the numbers here uh, indicate uh, SPTN number and these are the, uh, what do you call the, oh, sorry, we call the uh, sorry the relative density of the granular material on a cohesive soil. If the SPTN number between zero to four, so the uh, the soil is categorized as very loose, four to ten loose, and so on. Right. Let's take a look at uh, at depth of six meters here. Okay, six meters here. It performs as number four, which is the standard penetration number four. So before this, they have uh, three SPT tests, okay, standard penetration test. So at this level, six meters here, they perform SPT uh, or standard penetration test. So the first 75 mm, to obtain the first 75 mm, it required one blow. The second 75 required one blow as well. 75 mm, one blow up to 675 mm. So each segment required one blow. The SPTN number here is obtained by totaling the number of blows required to penetrate the last 300 mm, meaning the last four 75 mm segments. So these are the last four, one, two, three, four. So the SPTN equals to one plus one plus one plus one equals to four. Okay, at this level or at this step, after uh, performing the SPTN number, I'm sorry, after performing the standard penetration test, this sampler are uh, uh, taken out and then the split spoon sampler is open and the samples were, uh, the sample was measured. So in this case, the length of the sample obtained uh, was 320 mm. So the length of the soil obtained in the sampler is, uh, was 320 mm. And here 450 mm, it indicates that the total 450 mm was achieved. So it is recorded here 6 to 6.45, meaning the penetration here is 0.45 meters or 450 mm. So R over R equals to 320 divided by 450. Slightly below 6.45 mm at depth of 6.5 mm, sorry, Slightly below 6.45 meters at the depth of 6.5 meters, undisturbed sample was obtained, okay, which is indicated by 
u d4. When do we take this undisturbed sample? Again, refer to the criteria that must be fulfilled or must be satisfied in order to obtain undisturbed sample. So the soil must be soft, cohesive soil. So in this case, how do we know it's soft, cohesive soil? So after it's open, by observation, they found that this soil is categorized as silt. Silt can be categorized as cohesive soil. So based on SPTN number N equal to four here, four cohesive soil, four here. Soft or firm. So that's why they took undisturbed sample because the soil is cohesive and this, uh, the soil was considered as soft. So they took undisturbed sample. And then again, the recovery ratio here is indicated as 450 divided by 500. This 500 came from 6.5 to 7, 500 mm or 0.5 meter. And then they found that the length of the sample obtained was only 450 mm. Similarly, at a, at a depth of 7.5 meter, so they perform another SPT or standard penetration test S5 here. Yeah? So these are the uh, recorded number of blows. Okay? First 75, second 75, third 75, fourth 75, 75, and sixth 75. Okay? So the first two 75 here yeah? were not taken into account in determining the SPTN, only the last four here. So six plus eight plus seven plus nine equals to 30, okay, equal to 30. And when they open, they measure the soil sample obtained, this is about 340, and then the total penetration is 450. Okay, it's indicated here, 7.5, up to 7.95, so the difference is 450 mm, so 450 here. When they opened, they observed or they found that the soil sample was clay, considered as cohesive soil. But take note that the n here equals to 30. So we go down here, n equal to 30, considered as very stiff or hard. So in that case, undisturbed sample was not obtained because again, in order to obtain undisturbed sample, the soil must be soft cohesive soil. Right, another one here is uh, test number, uh, standard penetration test number six here, okay, at the level of nine meters. So these are the uh, number of blows. First 75, second 75, third 75, fourth 75, fifth 75. So mm -hmm. the 675, no blows here. Okay. Again, the first two 75, the number of blows required to uh, penetrate the first two 75 mm was not taken into account, only the last four. But in this case, we have only three. Right? Only three here. So the 13, 22, 15. If you total these numbers, okay, 13 plus 22 equal to 35 plus 15 equals to 50. But take note here, SPTN 50 was achieved, but the last 300 mm was not satisfied. Okay. So again, to indicate the, whether the soil is hard or not is based on SPTN. When SPTN equals to 50, so we can categorize the soil as hard and normally we stop driving the uh, split spoon sampler. That's why it is written as 50, N equal to 50, but what this 150, uh, 170 mm means? 170 mm means the penetration for the last 50 blows is only was only 170 mm instead of 300 mm. 
remember the definition of SPTN is to drive the last 300 mm, but they had achieved 50 blows, but only 170 mm penetration. How to know seven, uh, 170 mm here? So this is 75, 75, 150, and then they measure the last 15 year, the last 15 blows uh, only penetrated 20 blows, uh, sorry, 20 mm. So 75, 75, 20 becomes 170. That's why N is written as 50 slash 170 mm. So you don't have to calculate 50 divided by 170. Just leave it like as it is, 50 slash 170 mm. Okay, people or engineers or designer, they understand this 50 blows, but, on, uh, but the 50 blows could only penetrate 170 mm. If we refer to the last two same, uh, examples here, it was uh, it written n equal to 30 and equal to 4 without the slash, you know, because uh, the last 300 mm penetration was achieved. So no need to write slash 300 mm. Okay, engineers or designers they understand without writing the slash 300 mm, they understand that the full 300 mm penetration was achieved. Based on research uh, performed by some researchers, it was found that the SPTN number need to be corrected because of several reasons due to energy, due to the size of the borehole, due to the uh, equipment use and so forth. There are, uh, there are certain parameters to be included in the determination of uh, SPTN. So in this case, uh, it's referred to 70% uh, energy transfer. Okay, so N prime 70 equals to N multiplied by EM multiplied by uh, CB, CS, CR, and CN. The N here refers to the field SPTN number, the, SP, uh, the number that I explained before. E sub M factor for energy used, CB factor for size of holes, CS and CR factors for equipment use. So these factors can be referred to specific tables based on the standard uh, use, whether it's uh, ASTM, Eurocode, or BS, or maybe provided by the manufacturer of the machine. CN here is a correction factor based on this uh, overburden pressure, which is expressed as square root of 100 divided by sigma sub naught prime, where sigma sub naught prime here is the effective vertical stress at depth of interest or where the SPT was performed. Uh, this chart can be used to estimate uh, the internal friction angle of sand based on SPTN. I took it from PAC here. So based on SPTN number, you go up and then project to the left to obtain the value of uh, internal friction angle. In addition to that, SPTN number can also be used to estimate relative density, uh, unit weight or unbrained compressive strength for cohesive soil. Okay, now what's the use of N values? Early recommendation, they use the smallest uh, SPTN value in the borehole to represent the strength of the soil below the ground surface. But the garden practice, the average N within the zone of interest uh, is being used, for example, here, based on uh, estimation Let's say this is the width of a footing, this is B. So the average N values taken into consideration, uh, the values of N uh, within the zone of 0 0.5 B above the base of the footing up to 2 B below the base of the footing. So this is the zone of interest 0.5 B up to 2 B. Mm -hmm. So based on this SPTN number, so we uh, 
if the if the soil is sand, so, uh, the internal friction angle can be estimated using the uh, previous graph that I've shown you. This uh, table shows the relationship between uh, Macintosh probing and SPT and number uh, to be used to, re, uh, to be used with uh, clay here. Right? So on the left column here, it represents the SPTN number blows per 300 mm, and the right column here represents the JKR Macintosh probe. So uh, 0.2 SPTN number, the equivalent is 0 to 10 for the Macintosh or JKR probing and so forth. Now, based on the SPTN number or the number of blows uh, from JKR or Macintosh probe, the consistency of the soft cohesive or uh, the consistency of the cohesive soil can be estimated. So if zero uh, up to two SPTN number considered as very soft, two to four soft and so forth. In addition to that, there's a, another column here that we may refer to to represent the unconfined compressive strength. The unit is KPA. So depending upon the uh, SPTN number or this uh, number of blues based on S uh, JKR or Macintosh probing, so we may be able to obtain the unconfined compressive strength values. So based on this uh, unconfined compressive strength values, so we may obtain the uh, cohesion, the undrained cohesion of the soil based on the value Okay, based on the value, because it's unconfined compressive strength. If you remember what we have learned in soil mechanics, un, uh, under unconfined, under unconfined uh, fractional test, meaning sigma sub three equal to zero, and the values here uh, represent the uh, strength or the unconfined compressive strength or Q sub sub Q sub U. So based on uh, Q sub three equal to zero and the appropriate value here. So we can draw a more circle. Okay. Make sure that the scale on the x-axis equals to the scale on the y-axis. Let's say the SPTN number value equals to 8, for example. So 8, the unconfined compressive strength is 100. So sigma sub 3 equals to 0. Q sub U here equals to 100. Okay. 8 represents 100, so 100. So take the midpoint between this uh, sigma sub 3 and Q sub U, draw a circle using a compass, and then draw a horizontal line to represent undrained condition, internal friction angle equal to 0, so we can obtain C sub U, or half of this diameter to represent the uh, undrained cohesive of the soil. Uh, this table uh, shows the relationship between SPTN, uh, JKR, and Macintosh uh, probe. Okay. On the left column here represents the SPTN number, and the right right corner uh, right column here represents the JKR or Macintosh probe number here, or number of blues. In between here, we have relative density, unlike in uh, cohesive soil. The, uh, the, the description of the soil uh, expressed in terms of consistencies, uh, very soft, soft, stiff, firm, and so forth. Here, the relative density expressed as very loose, loose, medium, dense, very dense, depending upon the SPTN number or this uh, number of loose required to penetrate based on JKR Macintosh probing. There's another column here to uh, represent the allowable soil pressure, KPA, depending upon this uh, number of blows here, right? Allowable soil pressure, but take note here is for sand. Previous table for clay, this table for sand. So based on the SPTN number, let's say it equals to uh, 20. So 20, the SPTN number equals to 20, so the soil is categorized as medium dense, and the value is between 
uh, 80 and uh, 280 okay, in between, so in the middle. So it represents the allowable sun pressure or the pressure that can be applied to the soil without causing shear failure to the sand. Okay, let's go to the uh, soil profiling, how to draw a soil profile based on borehole log. Let's say we have two borehole logs obtained from a similar project site. Let's say we have borehole log A here and borehole log B and assuming this uh, site is a flat area, okay, zero meter, equal to zero meter flat area. Okay, before that, the soil sampling or SPTN uh, during the drilling operation uh, performed at every 1.5 meters. Okay, from zero, 1.5, they perform SPT, three meters, they perform SPT, 4.5, they perform SPT, and so on. At the same time, they take samples. In addition to that, if there are changes in soil type, they also perform SPT as well as uh, obtaining the soil sample. Okay, okay move back to this uh, borehole lock. Let's say we have two borehole locks here. To draw this uh, soil profile diagram, we have to examine these two borehole locks. We look for uh, similar soil type with similar characteristic. Okay? For example, we have clay here but we don't have clay here. Okay, we have clay, two clays here, soft clay and very soft clay, but no clay uh, in the borehole B. Okay? So we go deeper here, stiff sandy silt, silt. So in borehole B, we have silt, silt. So we may join stiff sandy silt with stiff silt, can be joined. Okay? Stiff silt, stiff silt, but here we have hard silt, we have firm silt, so cannot be joined, okay? So generally, we look for similar type of soil and similar soil characteristic to join the, for, uh, to, to obtain the soil profile diagram. So for example here, this is the zero meters flat area, okay? Bohol A here, Bohol B here. So from 0 to 1.5 meter, we have soft silty clay or soft clay. Okay, soft clay. So I just draw based on my uh, interpretation. Okay, you may di uh, draw differently. You may, differ may draw differently because it depends on your judgment here. So I just assume soft clay from Bohol A here ends here. It could end here. Okay. It's okay. And then from 1.5 meters to 3 meters, we have very soft clay, 1.5 to 3. We have very soft clay, so we have no clay in borehole B, so maybe it ends here, or maybe it ends here. It's okay, right? And then from 3 to 4.5 meters, 3 to 4.5, we have steep silt. Here we have 0 to 1.5 meter steep silt, so we may join Stiff silt here with stiff silt. So three, four point five, zero, one point five. So we have a layer of stiff silt. And then from four point five to six meters, we have a uh, hard sandy silt. Here we have uh, have no hard sandy silt, so it's alone. Okay, we may draw the curve your lines here it may end here or it may end here we don't know okay just assume and then from 6 to 7.5 6 to 7.5 this is a medium dense clay sand so we have medium dense here so 6 meter up to 7.5 meter can be connected to 4.5 to 6 meters here so 6 up to 4.5 and then 7.5 up to 6 meter, so it's indicated as medium dense sand, a layer of medium dense sand. Okay, and then uh, from 7.5 to 9 meters, we have very dense silty sand. We have very dense sand here, can be connected 7.5 and 7.5. 7.5, 7.5, 7.5, 7.5, 7.5, 7.5, 7.5, 7.5, 7.5, 7.5, 7.5, 7.5, 7.5, 7.5, 7.5, 
7.5, 7.5 can be connected. But here, 6 to 7.5, we have uh, only 10 cent. So no uh, no partner here. Yeah? So it's a loan, it's 10 cents. That's how we uh, draw the soil profile. So by looking at this uh, soil profile diagram, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9 layers. Okay, nine layers. It need practice. Okay, it need practice. Another approach that I would suggest or that can be used to draw the soil profile, uh, this method is uh, slightly simplify the uh, uh, the soil profile diagram, simplify and reduce the complexity. Okay. In this case, I refer to the similar type of soil, but with uh, properties which are neighbors. Okay. What I mean by neighbors, refer back to the uh, borehole lock here. Okay, let's say we have cohesive soil. Very soft and soft can be considered as neighbors. Very soft and firm, they are not neighbors. Okay. Similarly here, soft and firm can be considered as neighbors, but soft and stiff, they are not neighbors. Firm and stiff are neighbors. Which, uh, they are adjacent to each other. That's called as neighbor. Similarly for the non-cohesive soil, very loose and loose neighbors, loose and medium dense neighbors, but loose uh, and dense are not neighbors. Okay. Back to our soil profile here. Re, uh, find the uh, similar soil type, but with soil properties which are neighbors. For example, here we have clay, clay, soft and very soft. They are neighbors. If you refer to the buffalo lock, they are neighbors. So you can join here, but then there are no clays on the uh, buffalo B. So from zero to three meters in borehole A, very soft and soft clay can be joined. So it is written as very soft to soft clay here. Again, it may end here, it may end here, we don't know. And then from uh, three meters to 4.5 meters, soft, uh, sorry, stiff sandy silt. So we have stiff silt, firm sandy silt. So stiff silt, firm silt. Stiff and firm, they are neighbors, can be joined. So stiff, join here, stiff with firm. So from three to 4.5 on uh, in borehole A, and from zero to three meters in borehole B. So it form a layer of firm to stiff silt. In borehole A, from 4.5 meters to six meters, 4.5 to six meters, we had hard sandy silt or hard silt. There's no partner here, okay? So it's a lone hard seal. From six to 7.5, six to 7.5, medium dense sand in borehole B, we have loose, medium dense sand. So loose and medium dense are neighbors. So it can be connected medium and loose here. So it can be connected to form loose to medium dense sand. And lastly here, very dense sand and very dense sand can be joined. So we have another layer of dense to very dense sand. Sorry, we have a dense sand and very dense sand here. So from 7.5 to 6 meters, 7.5, 6 meters here and below here, is uh, considered as dense to very dense sand. Sorry. Okay, those are the two methods that we can employ to draw a soil profile diagram based on two borehole locks. In the first approach, similar soil type with similar characteristic from the two boreholes are uh, joined. In this case, we obtain quite a detailed uh, soil profile diagram with many number of uh, soil layers. 
In the second approach, similar soil type, but with characteristics which are neighbors with each other are joined. Using this approach, the number of layers can be reduced so that the complexity of the soil layers also can be minimized. You can use either method to draw your soil profile diagram. If you notice between borehole locks A and borehole locks B, the soil properties are quite erratic. So we don't know or we are not sure the exact condition between the two boreholes. If we had additional borehole between borehole A and borehole B, I would anticipate that we will be able to obtain a better soil profile diagram. Okay, those are the materials that I want to share with you in this video. Until we meet again in the next video on site investigation, thank you.